everyone, Uncle Jesse here. I saw the craziest post over on Facebook. Louise Grummet shared a picture that they were using wood glue to clean the screen of their resin 3D printer. And there is no way that I wasn't gonna test this out and see how well it works. And unfortunately, what can happen sometimes while working with resin 3D printers is while you're working with the vat and cleaning up your 3D prints, so just in general cleaning up after a project, you might end up with some residual resin somewhere on your vat that you didn't notice and end up getting some of it on your screen, then start your next print and end up with a little bit of cured resin on your screen. And the other big scenario that you could run into is if you end up with a hole in your FEP sheet of your vat and resin leaks mid print onto the screen of your resin 3D printer, you're gonna end up with cured resin all over this screen and end up having to either replace it or try and find a way to clean it up. And one of the no brainer ways to actually protect your screens of your resin 3D printers and your investment of these machines that you've bought into is by buying a screen protector, like something here from Mach 5, which makes a variety of different screen protectors for different resin 3D printers that you're able to just slap on there. And then if you end up with cured resin, you peel it off and put another one on and it's gonna protect your screen. And if by chance you don't have a screen protector on your resin 3D printer, which you definitely should, but if you're like me here, where I have a variety of different 3D printers that I have not installed those on yet for God knows whatever reason, I'm just lazy. You should definitely invest in these plastic razor blades. I've done a brief video previously that I'll link to that showcases these and showing you how you can actually scrape up the cured resin off of the screen by using a little bit of IPA and just continually working at these scrapers, they're really cheap and an effective way to clean off your screens and they're plastic. So you're really not gonna be risking scratching up the screen at all. And it just so happens that I have five resin 3D printers that we're gonna be testing this out on and seeing what the results look like. There's also a varying range of cured resin across these different machines, ranging from just a little to a whole lot. We have three different Elegoo Saturns, including the original beta unit of the Saturn that I initially looked at many years ago at this point. We also have the Mars Pro and the Mars 2 Pro, which all need to be cleaned. And I already have some wood glue on hand. However, it's like two years old and I think it's mostly all dried up inside of here. So I'm gonna run over to Lowe's and see what we can find. So there are a handful of different wood glue options for us to choose from, including different varying prices between those, between the different brands. Also make sure when you're looking at these that you're not buying super glue or any sort of other adhesive that's in this section, you specifically want wood glue. And since I have so many different resin 3D printers that I'm interested in cleaning, let's go with three different options here. I'm gonna go for one of the cheapest one of the mid-priced and one of the more expensive ones. So I've got some of this Elmer's wood glue, which is the cheapest option. Then we have our tight bond to premium wood glue, which is our mid value. And then we have our Gorilla wood glue, which is the most expensive option that was available there. The instructions aren't entirely clear on what the process is for this. So what I'm gonna do is proceed with taking a little of this 90% IPA and just wiping down the screens to make sure that they're at least a little bit clean before we start this process and then let them air dry. And after giving this Mars Pro screen just a good wipe down with IPA, it removed most of the gunk that was on there. So I'm not gonna be performing anything on this machine. It looks like it's gonna be fine other than it's just kind of filthy and nasty. Now, I really don't recommend you going about doing this next part, but since all of these screens have a varying degree of how much resin is cured on them, I'm gonna take a small amount of resin and brush it onto the center of the screen, then expose it to UV light so that it's cured directly on the center of the screen so that we have a specific point of interest that we can focus on for each of these cleaning attempts. This way, at least there's some level of consistency between each of the three testing options that we're gonna be looking at. So now that we've done that, we've had three different machines that we're really gonna be testing this with. We've got one of the Saturns, another Saturn, and our Mars 2 Pro. The other Saturn here that I have off to the side doesn't have a whole lot of resin on it. So I think I'm just gonna go about cleaning that the traditional way that I go about cleaning most of my screens now, which is just with some IPA and a plastic razor blade. And I really just don't wanna further wreck this one because it just has that small spot in the corner. So what we're gonna be looking at is the first one is using the Elmer's wood glue. Then the second one, we're gonna be using this tight bond to premium and then and then the third, we're gonna be using Gorilla Wood Glue. And first up is our Elmer's Glue. So this is Elmer's Wood Glue, not the school glue. Uh, I'm not really sure how much of this I'm gonna need, so I'm just sort of squeezing it all on. And I'm gonna smear it all around here. 
The idea is once this cures, we should be able to scrape it off all in one big piece. Also, I'm trying my best not to get it on any of the side sticker here or this uh, Kaplan tape or whatever this is that's used to hold down the screen. Next up is Titebond, our mid-tier or mid-priced option. So here I'm just gonna, again, squeeze this on the screen while not as heavily coated with resin there's just a lot of resin residue all over the screen. And next up we have the Gorilla Glue. All right, we've got all three screens coated and now I'm gonna let these sit for a few hours and cure how long. I honestly have no idea. I don't know if it's gonna be 30 minutes, one hour, six hours, 24 hours. I'm gonna come back after dinner and check in on these and see how uh, stiff they are for removal. If anything, I might just wait overnight and try and remove them in the morning. And while we let these cure, I wanted to take a minute to say thank you to Elegoo for sponsoring today's video. If you're interested in more information about the Elegoo resin 3D printers that I love printing with, you can find more information about those down below. And I went off and printed this here on the Elegoo Mars 3, which just so happens to be my favorite resin 3D printer at the moment. It's just the perfect combination of build volume, print speed, as well as price for the machine. Again, if you're interested in more information about any of the 3D printers that I've shown off in today's video, you'll find links to those down below. Thanks again to Elegoo for sponsoring today's video. So it's about three hours later and unfortunately everything's still tacky. So I'm gonna let this sit and cure overnight and hopefully by tomorrow morning, everything will be completely solid and we can try and remove it and see what it looks like. All right, it's been a full 24 hours and everything looks like it's completely cured at this point and ready for us to remove. First up is our Elmer's glue. Let's see if I can use this plastic spatula to get up under that. It's not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to get up under there. Can I use my finger? I, I probably should have put like a little piece of paper or cardstock or something in there so that I could have used that to lift it up would have been a smarter idea. And we'll try the plastic razor. Oh my goodness. All right, I'm using a really sharp metal spatula to try and get under one corner. There we go. I was able to get under one small corner here and I should be able to hopefully peel this up. Oh my gosh, it's wanting to take the whole screen up with it. All right, that's definitely not picking up the resin. <laughs> so the Elmer's glue was just a horrible idea. I don't really think it picked up any of the cured resin that was on there previously. Certainly not the big centered cure piece of resin that I had there on the screen, uh, but even some of the outliers that I had around the surrounding sections, aren't coming up as well. Plus, one thing I wasn't anticipating was the amount of mess that this is making trying to get this off. It's sort of flaking off in pieces. Uh, other parts, it's kind of satisfying to peel up, but for the most part, it's just kind of a mess. All right, I'm gonna go with the same method here of using this on the side, very carefully trying to get up under. The tight bond is much, much softer in terms of how this is cured than the Elmer's glue. It's almost like a rubbery type material here. Uh, still didn't pick up that centerpiece of resin there. This one is just really enjoyable to peel off. And looking at the piece that we peeled off, I'm really not seeing any resin flaking or little bits of resin that was cured on the screen here coming up with this as well. And finally, we have the Gorilla Glue, which We'll see how this pulls up. So at a close inspection here, the Gorilla Glue did end up pulling up some of the cured resin that was on the edges of the screen there. So there's definitely some cured resin bits on either side that it lifted up. There's still a good bit that's left cured on this screen that uh, I, again, for I think all of these, I, I do have replacement screens that I ordered previously uh, as backups that I'll more than likely just be swapping these out with. But for this little experiment, I would really not recommend using this unless I'm just going about it entirely wrong. The best way that you're gonna be able to try and solve cured resin 
on your screens without having to replace it is by just manually scrubbing away at it with some isopropyl alcohol and these plastic razor blades. It does require a good amount of elbow grease just to get in there and continually work at it until it pops free, but it does work. And I'm honestly happy that I attempted this because I would rather attempt something stupid like this, like pouring wood glue on your resin 3D printer screens and finding out if it works or doesn't work so that you don't go about making this mistake and ruining one of your 3D printers where I have a few replacement parts laying around that I can easily swap these out with. But I'm also kind of impressed with the results that I'm seeing with working with these thin layering of wood glue. I'm probably going to try and incorporate this into a future cosplay build. I mean, honestly, I could see myself making some sort of a translucent visor with this material. It's it's honestly really, really cool and uh, really malleable here. I'm going to let this cure for a few more days and see if it really stiffens up. But if it stays like this, I'm going to be kind of impressed to see what I can do with it. I also want to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support. If you're interested in more information about my resin 3D printer settings, you can find those over in my Patreon. And if you have an alternative way of cleaning off cured resin off of your resin 3D printer screens that you like working with, let me know in the comments down below. And hopefully that will help some other folks out there as well with another alternative way to clean these up. But if you end up in that situation, a plastic razor blade and some isopropyl alcohol is probably the best way to go about trying to clean that up aside from just entirely replacing the screen. And I just want to say thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye now.